Welcome to the Business After Hours, where the ties loosen, the suit relax, and we talk business without the boring. Grab your favorite drink, kick back, and let's dive into the world of business after hours. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Business After Hours podcast. We're joined with Jared and Stacy. How are you guys doing today? Wonderful. Doing well, thank you. Good. Good. It's Wednesday, so it's hump day. Um, everybody's week going good so far. Uh, yes, yeah, so far. We're surviving. Yeah, yeah we're surviving. <laughs> so far. <laughs> Seems to be continuous survival mode here anymore mm-hmm. these days. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stacy, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, I'm a uh, speaker, an author, um, I coach, and I'm a podcaster. And uh, I've turned podcasting into like almost a full time business now. So, I'm focusing a lot on my podcasting business. Congrats. Congrats so, on thank that. Thank you. And what's your business besides the podcast? So um, I, you know, I have a little story that goes with it. I don't know if you want me to share it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Please do. Yeah. So, you know, when I was five, I had like an ear infection and a virus and um, mom took me to the doctor and they gave me some meds. And then one night she heard a gurgling sound from, you know, the other room. She came in, I was turning blue and I was in a grand mal seizure. They had rushed me to the hospital and they found that the virus had turned into encephalitis and it had traveled to my brain. Um, I was induced in a coma. And during that time, the doctors told my parents, most likely if she comes out, she'll probably be paraplegic or she'll probably have severe brain damage. So my father, who's from a, like a Greek island, and you know he was one church, one doctor, one everything. And uh, there was a, a statue and it was known to have teardrops fall from its eyes. And he was praying that it would be okay. And he told me that when he looked up, a teardrop rolled from my eye. And I woke up and I opened my eyes and I asked for McDonald's french fries. And so uh, <laughs> I wasn't paraplegic and I didn't have brain damage, but I did end up with epilepsy. To this day, they can't find the scar tissue, but it was a roller coaster ride growing up. College was really difficult because the late night studying, the stress of getting good grades caused my seizures to go through the roof. Um, you know, it was really a, a real a, a battle, you know. Um, so, the important when- question, though, is did you get the fries? I did get the fries. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It's important. <laughs> Definitely important. <laughs> I was dying to know. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. That got me the whole Happy Meal that day. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah. So you know, I I was uh, you know I I really struggled, and so one day I, I didn't know if I was going to even be able to finish college. So I I decided to write a letter. They had a magazine back then. From, sponsored by the Epilepsy Foundation. And I asked them to publish my article and I asked people, how do you cope with epilepsy? And to my surprise, I received like three to 400 letters from all over the United States and Canada. And um, they were very inspiring. People shared their stories, their advice. And I took a lot of that stuff and it inspired me. And I created my own regiment and I had to get through you know, college. And I got through college, I graduated, I ended up getting a huge corporate job in the city. And I was kind of living the dream life. And then one day, you know, I felt a seizure coming on. I fell to the ground. Um, You know, I was looking around to see if there was somewhere I could hide because I would always get a a feeling before I had a seizure. So I always knew I was going to have one, but there was nowhere to go that no one would see me. So I fell to the ground. I was conscious, but I couldn't move. And one of the executives just stepped over me and kept walking. And I couldn't believe it. And um, shortly after, you know, the the co-producer came over and said, you know, Stace, you're doing a fantabulous job, but, you know, we're going to have to let you go. You know, um, you know, I'm I'm sorry. And uh, I just walked out of there with my head up high and I said, one day I am going to be a success. I didn't know where I was headed. I didn't know where I was going, but I was going to make sure whatever I did in life, I was going to be good at it and I was going to be able to be proud of myself. And so um, I ended up, you know, starting my own freelance business. I started um, meeting a lot of people. A lot of the people that are billionaires today were just starting out back then. And I was, I was doing their presentations, their speech writing and all that other stuff. And, um, and then one day I met an herbalist and he said, you know, I need a lot of research and writing done. And, uh, you know, so I started doing all this research and writing and holistic living and, and, um, 
and I learned a lot of stuff. I said, wow, a lot of this stuff could apply to me. And I started applying it to my life. And my seizures went from like 12 to 9 to 8, 7, 6, 5 to the point where they became controlled. And I started writing about it. I don't know if you remember uh, Blogger back in the day on Google. Yeah, yeah. They gave us that free little uh, blog. So I started writing and creating my own little blog. And like 400 people came right away. I was like, wow, people are interested in this stuff. And so then I, I decided to, um, you know, create my own little website. And then um, I met a website designer and he needed content for his websites that he designed and then he saw my little blog and he's like I can make you a nice website and then that little website turned into 10,000 then 100,000 and then the the, the, uh, the site just kept growing and I took that all those stories that I told you about and I created a book and I created that regiment that I told you about and I create I put all those letters of inspiration in the book and um, that book became a bestseller because there was no books at, at that time to teach people how to live with epilepsy. So the coping part, you know, people want to, when they have something, they want to learn how to cope with it mentally, you know, physically, they, they need to know how to cope. And that's what we lack in society. We diagnose, but we don't teach people how to cope. So, and then I, I spent about five or six years and I wrote the complete herbal guide that became a bestseller. That was about all the holistic stuff that I learned. And, you know, back then holistic living was just kind of making its way into society, you know, and, um, you know, I start. I got a letter one day in my email box, and someone said, "I found your book in Barnes and Nobles. I was on the verge of suicide, and I I read your your book. I followed your regiment, and I just want to say thank you because you saved my life." And that's when the light bulb went off. That's when I realized where I was heading, my passion, and um, you know, I went on a crusade to help people learn how to improve their lives, and and then it just led me to writing books, working with celebrities, you know, uh, doing lots of writing. And then I created the the the, the uh, podcast on self improvement, and that co that connects with everything. So you know, mental health, physical health, spiritual health, and business. Because when you can't focus and you can't, your mental health isn't good. It affects your business. You know, it's all connected in one big circle. So that's what my podcasting is is been, and it blew up. And within the first three months, you know, after working so many years with so many different PR agents and and other people, uh, in three months we we booked for a year, and now it's just we have like 1.3 million listeners. It's like growing like crazy. And um, now I'm, I'm helping people create and, and build their own website, their own uh, podcast. And create, I help them to, to create it, to produce it, to promote it for them. And uh, that's where I'm at now. You know, I didn't really think I was going to be in this podcasting business. Like, you know, I wasn't even going to do it. A friend of mine who interviews rock and rollers, he kept bugging me. Stace, you got to really, you know, do it, you know, because like I had already been on the Dr. Oz show five or six times. I worked with Ariana Huffington. I, you know, and I was like, podcasting? I don't know. It's a lot of work, you know, and he kept nagging the hell out of me. So I finally did it. And because of him, I am where I am today. That's awesome. Congrats, first yeah. of all. That's that's an awesome achievement. I'm now, what? Sure. Um, how many how many seizures are you having um, now? Zero. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's great. <laughs> that's great and congrats yeah. on that as well. Yeah. Is that do the herbs? I do a lot of holistic living. So I do integrative medicine. So that's using the medication. I work with my doctors and I take medicine, but yet. You can't just pop a pill. This is what so many people think. You can pop a pill and the problem is going to go away. But right. you really have to create a lifestyle that is going to help you with your condition or what you're going through. So, you know, I changed my whole lifestyle. I changed the way I thought. I changed the way I handle stress. I changed my sleeping habits. I changed everything. You know, it was, you know, the way I ate. You know, every, I changed every little thing about my lifestyle. So when I changed my entire lifestyle and I was taking my meds and doing everything I would, you know, I knew would help me. That's when my seizures became controlled. So now a lot of people, obviously, when they hear holistic, they don't think of, of modern medicine, obviously, today. Um, but it sounds like and maybe I'm not understanding correctly, but it sounds like you also take modern, I guess, medicine uh, yeah. from doctors and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. Integrative medicine is when you, you know, if you have a, a, a problem and you start using natural remedies and the problem isn't going away or it's getting worse, you need to go for medical help. You need to see a doctor. You know, you can't there. You know, I've known people that have tried to, you know, fix breast cancer on their own holistically 
and they're not here sadly anymore. There is a time when you have to realize that I can't do it by myself. I need sure. help. And that's what, you know, modern medical, you know, medicine is here for, you know. So you have to find that right doctor, that doctor you could talk to, that doctor you could be honest with. Communication is key. That doctor that knows his stuff, because there are a lot of doctors that aren't the greatest out there. But when you find that right doctor that knows his stuff, even if he's a little cocky, if he knows his stuff or she knows her stuff and you could communicate well with them and have a good relationship with them, then that is the number one thing you should do. And by working with my doctor and he saw how I was changing by incorporating holistic living into my life, he's like, go for it, Stacy, do it. And he even wrote a book about it himself because he was for it. You know, there's nothing wrong with using holistic living, you know, taking holistic living and natural remedies and, and incorporating if it's going to help you because you have to be careful because some medications can you know decrease the potency of medications and so if you have something like heart problems or epilepsy or you know um you know uh depression and things like that you got to talk to your doctor because some of those supplements can really interact you know negatively you know so it's a it's a, a thing of communication and, and being open right did you help your doctor write your book his book what did you help your doctor write the book no, my doctor oh, actually so. got my, helped me get my, some of my books published. I oh, wow. The, Look at that. Okay. <laughs> so I, was first, I was one of the first uh, uh, people that wasn't a doctor to get published in a traditional publishing company that was only for medical doctors. And oh, okay. he had written a letter and he had, um, he had endorsed me and they published my book and I wrote it with, um, I had a other doctor co-author it and go through it and make sure everything was correct. And I got what my book for epilepsy and pregnancy written um, in, a, in a medical publishing company. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Congrats on that. So what are some of the uh, other holistic things that are you, you're incorporating um, in your daily life? So, you know, I, I like take I, I like to detox. I like to cleanse my body. I do. Um, you know, I, I uh, use different, but, you know, we don't realize, but we're, as we get older, we become deficient in a lot of things. You know, I, I say blood work is great. I like a fun functional medicine doctor and they do blood work on everything. So they know exactly what you're deficient in, exactly what you need. And you could work with a functional medicine doctor and get the right you know, um, find out what, what the right vitamins and what the right supplements that you need in your body and how much you should actually be taken. Because some people try to be their own doctor. And unless you're getting extensive blood work and you're understanding where your body's at, because, you know, the older we get, the more our body changes, you know, you, you really need to look at it from a, a, a more responsible and, and scientific way, you know, too. And I changed the way I ate, you know, I started looking at ingredients, you know, there's so many things out there. I can go on about the food industry forever. You know, we have, you know, diabetes has tripled. Things have changed in our society so bad. You know, the way the food they put out there, everything is processed nowadays. You know, we, we really have to look at trying to spend some time just to eat a little healthier. You know, there are things that you should buy organic and there are things you can get away with that you don't need to buy organic. But when you look at a, the, the what's in, you know, you're buying something off the shelf and you're looking at the ingredients, look what they put in there, you know, and read the 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 outside of it carefully like when it says no added hormones well that means it has hormones in it they just didn't add any extra ones to it you know but it, when you read it real quick it sounds like there's no hormones in it you right. know like you have you have like eight year old little girls you know going through their menstruation cycle because of the the hormones in the milk and you know and you know the the eggs and and you know they put you know in the chick the hormones they put in the chicken because if you read the book there's a book um, vegetarian um, or vegan it's called and she talks about she shows you what they do in these farms to the chickens and the cows and there's like a hundred cows in this one clustered small area they're so sm smushed together that the hoofs are deformed because they're, and then one gets sick and they have to put antibiotics in all those, right. all those cows, let's say. And yeah. then, you know, so we're getting those antibiotics, you know, we're getting, and they're shooting them up with hormones so they can produce more milk. Well, you know, who's getting those hormones? We're getting those hormones. You give those hormones to, you know, kids and you give those hormones to adults. 
our whole body functions with hormones. So you're throwing off the chemistry of people's bodies. You know, all these, you know, foods, they have dyes in them, a lot of them, most of them, you know, and, you know, cheese is supposed to be white, you know, yellow American cheese is supposed to be white. They put that color in to make it look pretty, you know, punch, they put red. Well, those dyes cause cancer, you know, and after you drinking it for so many years, you know, you're, you're giving, you're putting it out there, you know, and the possibilities get higher. So, you know, we got to really, and if you buy vitamins in your body, you're looking on the on other side, if you can't pronounce the word, then it's not a good vitamin, you know, when it has on the bottom, all the other stuff it has, you know, if you're not able to pronounce the word, then I say, put that vitamin or supplement back on the shelf. That's great. Yeah, it. Isn't it hard to, uh, because I, I don't know if uh, if you're vegan or, or vegetarian, um, but it I'm just seems I, like I, I eat meat. I okay. you know I, I eat, you know I, I I eat fish and chicken and stuff like that. But I'm just using that as an example yeah. to show you what you know they do to you know that that's you know she wrote the book you know because she was she, I don't know if she was I can't remember it was a while ago vegan or vegetarian. She was you know giving the examples of both, but she talked about it you know and when you saw what she, they did to the animals, you were like. You want to become a vegan or a vegetarian after you read that book. <laughs> right. Well, it's it's crazy because uh, I mean, even when you go on the the vegetarian side or the vegan side of things, it's still hard to eat decent there too because of all the crap they put on our veggies. Uh, yeah. I mean, so you you <laughs> you can't go either direction anymore these days, and and you're just stuck, yep. and it, and it sucks because. Yeah. My own personal belief is that a lot of the mental illnesses here in America are because of our foods. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, they talked about like ADHD and, and a lot mm -hmm. of different, you know, things that people have that could be related to food, food related, you know, all those chemicals that they're putting in there definitely trigger, you know, you know, the brain. And there are some foods that some, some food industries will put certain chemicals because they want you to get addicted to it. So yep. they will put certain ingredients in the food because they want you to go, to keep buying it and they want you to have more of it. So you get these cravings. Those cravings are for, from certain ingredients that they put in the food. That's why McDonald's puts sugar in their salt. They put everything in their food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell us about, um, obviously you've gone through um, successfully, I want to say, um, so far at least, um, of your, your medical issues. Um, so congrats on that. I mean, that's got to be a huge feat in of itself. And then obviously starting businesses without of that and, and podcasts and whatnot. What's your journey been like, you know, bat battling your health and starting businesses? Yeah, you know, it wasn't easy, you know, like when I was, I, I do public speaking. So when I was doing nationwide speaking, you know, I, I had some issues I was dealing with and, and, you know, it's hard, you know, sometimes, you know, life isn't perfect. We all go through our ups and downs. And, you know, when, when things arise, you know, it, it could be, it could, it's very challenging and it's, and that's where you have to, you know, take a step back. That's where I wrote empower yourself. Don't let your conditions empower you. And I meant that for everything, including stress, because, you know, a lot of times people, when, when obstacles arise, people just get so depressed that they just stop, you know, and that's where the depression comes in. They get angry. They get frustrated. Why me? Why me? Why is things always happening to me? And, you know, and then, you know, if you're, if you're constantly having these things happen to you or you have a condition or, or you're battling with stuff all the time, you get to the point where you start to feel depressed. And it's like, why am I even here? You know, and that's a common thing for people. And that's scary because depression can lead to suicide. You know, people who even suffer from pain, they have a very high community of, of suicide rate. Because think about it. When you wake up in the morning and you're feeling pain every single morning and you, you're having a hard time getting out of bed or going up and down the stairs you're like what's my purpose man you know and you have to just stop and think and and you know what i put the mentality and the mindset in my brain that everything happens for a reason you know if i was working in the city and i had that big corporate job and i was going in the direction i would was going in i would probably have a different personality i would be you know more into the all right let's buy a louis vuitton bag all right let's have a martini on a friday night you know i would look at people differently you know what i mean you know people in that business were very like backstabbing and be very egocentric you know and instead i i went down this road and and when I look at people and, and by doing so much advocating and, and helping others, 
I have a different look when I talk to people. I have empathy. I have, you know, I, sh I have a feeling of wanting to give kindness, gratitude, all these things that are inside of me, you know, I, I shine through and I, I, I try and positivity is, is key, man. It's, it's, it's key for survival. And I don't think I would be down that road, you know, the road I'm on today, if all these things didn't happen to me and it gets rough, you know, like life isn't easy. Things come back and, you know, symptoms come back, problems come back, you know, pain, you get pain as you get older, you know, everything hurts when you get older, you know, and, you know, you have to deal with it, you know, and it's like, you know, it's hard, you know, but you gotta, you, you gotta try to look at the positive. I take everything that's negative and I try to pull something positive out of it. And, you know, I feel like everything I've gone through in life has made me a stronger and better person. But there are times when I just look up in the sky and say, all right, God, you have <laughs> told me I'm good wherever I'm going next. No worries. I will be the best camp manager. I'll be the best lieutenant you ever had. You know, it's like, all right, stop. I'm good. You know, right. I, got, I got it. No, you know? I, I would definitely, I definitely agree. You know, yeah. so I was in the military. I suffered injuries, you know, and, and then PTSD. So I definitely yeah. tried to, to look at everything positive and more on a, a positive light. Cause I was seeing myself kind of, go into that negative you know light sometimes and it, i didn't like that where i was headed myself and so i i can definitely relate on that and agree with you on that that when you start seeing everything in a negative you know just you start going down like a sinkhole and it, I, I just i don't i don't understand how you can live like that you know what i mean and and it just it's a miserable place to be yeah I wrote for a um, for a veterans magazine and I was stunned because I got to comp commend you for everything you do, you know, and everything you did, you know, for our country. I really commend you. I would interview people who came back from their tours and some of them, you know, lost their legs. They lost, you know, they were had prosthetics and they all suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. They're like, when you're on the front line and you, you're in a tank and you, you see dead your bodies on the floor mm -hmm. and they're driving straight across, you know, that's something that stays with you the rest of your life. I, you know, almost every single person that comes back has some form of post-traumatic stress disorder. But, you know, how much is the country doing for these people? Because, you know, these people, and a lot too, too, is the transition. You go back from military to regular life. It's two different worlds. People don't realize that. You're trained to be a military officer, and then you come back and you have all these skills. But the transition is very difficult. Yeah, the, tr the transition was hard. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I struggled for for what a year, Jeff, right? I mean, you know, yeah. it was it was a real, real hard uh, transition out of the military, um, you know, and until I started trying to do something on my own is when I kind right. of really started turning myself around. But absolutely. Yeah, I really, I really feel that they need to put out more help for our military officers. They really need to really realize what they do than the after effects, you know, what they go through and have more services for these people. And the people who can't work that are on disability and they no longer are able to do the things they did, they have to be able to give them more than what they're giving them, you know, and that's just my opinion. But from what I've seen from all the people I've known in the military that have come back, you know, I, I really feel like we, 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 you know, there's a great amount of respect for our military officers, but great. There's a great amount of respect. Let's do something for them. What can we Absolutely. do to make their lives better? Absolutely. So uh, I do want to plug in your podcast as well. Um, what, uh, so tell us about your podcast. So my podcast is based on um, self improvement. So basically, like I told you, it, it you know we started out with you know thinking okay we're going to do a niche, but then you know what we realized that everything is intertwined. Like I was telling you earlier, you know we did you know we were focusing on on um, mental health, we're focusing on physical health because when your mental health is right, people don't realize seventy percent of illnesses are caused by stress. So when you think about that, you're just like, you know, you really have to have a good mindset, you know, and people go through it in life. Everyone has stress. Everyone goes through things. And we have a lot of people in this society that suffer from mental illness. We have to show respect for them. They should not be feel like they're stigmatized or labelized because a lot of them keep quiet because of, of the stigmat stigmatism out there. There's nothing wrong with having a mental illness. So I have people come on and talk about these mental illnesses and talk about 
about some of them are people who've gone through it and now they they have great tools and techniques i have doctors that come on i have coaches that come on and they share how to cope with mental illness we talk about mindset we talk about all these other strategies and books that they've written that help people step by step on how to get through it and then physical health we have a lot of people with fitness and you know we live in a society that a lot of people are obese obese and it's 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 affecting, you know, we, we also have this stigmatism that we gave out, you know, big is beautiful. Well, what is it doing to your body? Let's think about that. You know, you know, I'm not looking at someone from the outside. I'm thinking about the health in the inside. So, you know, they, they a lot of these you know, people, as they get obese, they, they can't walk well, you know, their ankles and the feet start hurting diabetes, you know, diabetes kills your whole body from top to bottom it's away. You know, you got heart problems, stroke, you know, I just had, I knew someone just recently just had a heart attack. I knew someone that every day brought a big gulp to their, to their job. And even when they were starting to get little signs, I'm like, you know, trying to say in a nice way, maybe you should think about changing up your diet. Didn't listen. So she got one, she got one stroke. <laughs> A minor stroke, then she got another stroke, and then she got another stroke. Now her half her body's paralyzed. So you know what? You, you got to think about what you're, you know, what it's what how we eat and how you know the things we do, how it's affecting our body. So I have people related to the health industry come on, talk about. You know, I had a, a guy from a doctor from Harvard. You know, he came on. He talked about diabetes, and he talked about just a couple of steps you could do to get your diabetes back to normal, you know? And, it, and you know, and I, so those are the type of things I have people who are spiritualists that come on, they talk about mindset, they talk about, you know, different spiritual things, you know? Some people are religious, some people are just very spiritual and they go into the, you know, you know, taking, looking inside yourself and, and how to make yourself a better person. And then we have business too. So, so how can you, or, or even can you help somebody that doesn't even want to be helped? And, and I asked this just because we kind of, we kind of smiled when you talked about that, because we, we have a father that, that has pretty much every condition that you named and, and he really doesn't want, he doesn't really want to help himself in a sense, you know? Um, and, you know, we try to try to talk to him about it, but you know, it's on deaf ear, you know? And so yeah. I'm just curious on your thoughts on how do you help somebody that, that really isn't wanting you know, I had a couple of close friends. I had one specific close friend that I, you know, I knew I could see the beauty in her and she just needed a, a little help, you know, and what I've learned in life and what I've learned in, in, in helping people is that we can't, we can bring a horse to water, but we can't make it drink it. And unfortunately, if the person doesn't want to be helped, they're not going to, they're not going to help themselves. You know, it's just like, you know, an addict, he has to fall rock bottom. He has to hit rock bottom and he has to want to get up. You know, they are, they are addicts that, that hit rock bottom and sometimes they don't get up, you know, mm -hmm. but it's their choice. You know, unless they are willing to change that we can't, you know, unfortunately it's really sad because we love these people. We care about these people. We want to, we know that they could get better, but if they're not willing to get better, there is nothing, unfortunately, that we can do. We could put we could put everything in front of them. We can show them how you know it's 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 done. But you, if a person doesn't want to do it, they're just not going to do it. You know. And then giving advice too, I've learned. You know, they, if someone doesn't ask for advice, unfortunately, giving advice just pushes that person away. You know, and because they just don't want to hear what you have to say. And every time they see you, they know they're going to be lectured. And it, and it's the way we say things too. We can't lecture people. We have to be able to talk to people in a way where it's not, they're not, it doesn't seem like they're being lectured. They have to be the ones to express how they feel on the inside. You have to let them do the talking and let them dig inside themselves. But the question is, are they willing to dig inside themselves and they willing to find the problem themselves? And are they willing to fix the problem? Because it's all about them. We can't do anything, but they can do a lot. It's the choice of them going inside themselves, figuring out what the problem is, what's the root cause, you know, and then making changes to better themselves and to put themselves on the right track so they can get better, you know, but until then, unfortunately we're powerless and that's a hard thing, man. It's a hard thing to see someone you love just, you know, doing the wrong things and going down, the, going downhill. But unfortunately, if they're not willing, you know, we can't force them. It's true. Yeah. 
So obviously we deal with, or well, a lot of our target audiences is businesses, business owners and whatnot. What kind yeah. of advice can you give to them? Because obviously owning a business, as you know, is very stressful. And you had mentioned yeah. stress and how it is related to uh, 70% of illnesses and whatnot. What advice can you give to, to, to business owners, obviously, especially in this climate that we're in right now? Yeah, we have a lot of people also to come on our, our, our site that are entrepreneurs, that are people who have made it big and it, they have really great um, advice, advice also. But um, to get back to your question, you know, people are, in our society are impatient. You know, you know, unfortunately, when COVID came, it changed everybody's lives. You know, everything changed, the, you know, the way we market, the way we buy, everything we do is, is done differently. AI came into the picture. Everything is, is, has changed, you know. And so we have to you, when you're when you're creating a business, it depends where you are in the business. But when you're when you're in a business, you have to be patient. You know, people want things done. One, two, three. And it doesn't happen like that. It's first you have to build a platform. Then you have to really build a, a trajectory and, and really see, you know, what are my goals? What do I want to do? Where am I going to, where do I want to be in the next three months? Where do I want to be in the next six months? Where do I want to be in the next nine months? You know, and think about, you know, what industry am I in? And, you know, because sometimes people are all over the board. You know, they're not really sure. They're focusing on 10, 12 different things. And you really should try to build a, a tree. And then eventually you could branch off, you know, to related things. But until that tree starts growing, you know, you really should focus on one specific area and build that area. And you have to realize, you know, you have to look at your audience too, you know, you know, and if you're not, if you don't have the right audience, you're not going to be making sales. I can't tell you how many people, why am I not selling anything? Well, analyze your audience. You know, what do these people like? You might have the wrong audience and you might have to work on finding that right audience. You know, that's, that's a big problem, you know, and then also people, you know, they create these great businesses, but then they don't market properly. You know, you know, there are tons of lead magnets out there. There's tons of things you could do. You have to go out there and approach these people. You know, a lot of people think people are going to come to them. It doesn't work like that, you know. Right. You know it's, uh, you know, you have to really, you know, if you have a product or a service and you have a great idea and you have a, you know, everything is set up, you know, the way it should be, then you have to really get out there and put yourself out there. Connections are key. You know, you have to let people know, hey, I got this product or service and I think it could be great for you. I think it could it could help you do X, Y and Z and blah, 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 blah. And you, you can't you can't be shy about, you know, you know, approaching people and asking people to, to look at your product and look at your service. And you can't be shy about, you know, I, there are also people that are shy about asking money. You know, if you have a great product and you spend all these hours creating this product or service or you're putting all these hours into this service that you're providing for a consumer, some people are shy and they don't know how to properly scale their product, you know, so they're underscaling themselves because they're the feeling of self-worth, you know, you have to real, you know, so many people don't realize that they're worth a lot more than they give themselves credit. So if you're spending 12 hours, you know, on this one client, you know, you're not going to charge them $35. You know, there are people out there that, you know, create these great products and services, but they underscale themselves. You have to go out there, look what your competitor competitors are doing. How much are they selling it for? You know, what can you do and what's feasible for you that you could actually make a profit? And maybe you could say, okay, I could do it for this. You know, uh, you know, we're, we're charging less, but you know, or we're charging this amount, but you're getting X plus bonus X, Y, right. and Z. You know, you have to look at strategy. You know, strategy is key too. You have to look at the the way you're presenting yourself, and you have to, you know, and the way you present yourself is really important too. Because people go out there, they they have the trust factor is so important. You know, you have to believe in yourself. You believe in yourself, and you believe, you know, and, and that you could help a person, and you're sincere about it. That person will pick it up. You know, but if you go out there, and you know, there are so many con artists out there, and there are so many people out there that just don't how to present themselves to, you know, you go out there and say, you know, I have this great product and, you know, really can help you. And I really want you to try it. You know, the guy's going to look at you or the girl's going to look at you and like, huh, you know, right. or, or if they look like a scammer, they act like a scammer. They're not looking you in the eye. You know, you got to be careful. And then the sad thing is, is that people have been burned so much. People are afraid when they finally meet that great 
person and that sincere, sincere person that can really help them and they want to help them, sometimes they're hesitant, you know, because they've been burned in the past by other people. You sure. got to gain trust. You got to learn how to communicate with that person. You have to learn how to really bond with that person and show that person what you're about. And, 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 you know, you have to learn how to communicate well with people too. Yeah, I think, I think business is uh, all about building relationships. Um, I think unfortunately there's a lot of scams out there. Um, and so building, building that relationship is, is key. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I would say, you know, if, give, you know, if some, if uh, if you're, if you know, if you're doing something, instead of giving hundred percent, give three hundred percent. You know, show that person that you know that you want to help them. You know, show that person that you're willing to go the extra length for them. Because it's not just about selling one product. You want to keep them as a client. You know, an ongoing client. You know, you you want to keep them with you for a while. You know, you don't want to keep hunting for new clients. You want to you want to develop relationships with clients that you could have reoccurring you know business with you know and that's key too absolutely i think it i think the uh statistic says it costs more to to get more a new client than retain your current client um yeah, so yeah and i think that's absolutely important which is weird that some businesses mm -hmm. treat current clients like crap but give better deals to new clients and it's exactly strange, it's a strange yeah. concept to me but what yeah. are some what, what are some practical ways that a business owner can do outside of obviously their own company uh, to help try to reduce some of that stress. You mean with, with other clients, with people that they meet on the outside? No, just like help, help reduce their own stress level from oh, their own okay. personal side. Like for me, I offer coaching. Like I'll go into there. I'll offer them like if they if they buy a certain package, I'll offer free coaching and I'll give them free coaching for X amount of time. Then I'll go into their stuff and I'll analyze their stuff. I'll look at what they're doing and what they're not doing. And then I'll give them some great ideas. I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't think about that. And you see them grab a notebook and they start writing down stuff. And I'm like, you know, you know, in order to build your business, you have to start doing this and you have to start doing this and you should be doing this. And, you know, I looked at your website. It's a great website. But, you know, I think if you do X, Y and Z, you'll get their attention better because most people, when they go on a website, they only look at the first quarter, you know, unless something really grasps their attention and they'll hit the button and maybe go to the second page. Right. But most people go to the first quarter of the website. And if they like it, they stay. If they don't, they pop out, you know? So you really have to learn how to make things easy for people too. Like I go on websites and the person is amazing. The person has a great idea, great product, great service. But you go on their website and it looks like, it looks like they just wrote a documentary and it's like, whoa, you know, like people today, <laughs> attention, you know, you need to say a couple of words, you know, show a couple of pictures and get to the point, you know, and always have a call to action, you know, and, you know, people have to learn how to make things easier because we are now, you know, we used to be at an eighth grade level, you know, when it came to reading and writing, you know, where right. we just popped down to a sixth grade level in the United States. So most people read on a sixth grade level. So when you think about that, it doesn't matter how smart you are or how well you write, Think about the the level of society, you know, and what they're going to comprehend, and 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 gear it to that that you know, and be able to you know you know, and and then when you when you speak to people, you know, you just communicate on their level, you know. Once you, you get to know the person, then you can you know you connect and you can speak on their level. But when you're presenting and you're showing and you're and you're you're helping people, you know you have to just like look at look at their stuff and not criticize them but give them ideas you know and it's, it's right. all the way you word things too you have to really know how to talk to people you know there's all different types of people like they say the type a the type b you know you have to learn how to you know deal with each personality because each personality is gonna react differently sure sure um what advice would you give to business owners on if they're reluctant on hiring a coach like yourself? I think, honestly, I think everyone should have a coach. Like I'll, I'll give you an example. When I, I got to a point in my life where I kept building my business and I felt like I was stuck. I wasn't growing the way I wanted to grow. And so I went out and I found I, I this guy was doing a podcast and he had graduated from a speaking school that I had graduated from because I wanted to tweet, even though I spoke in front of Congress and I spoke, you know, did, did speaking. I wanted to really improve my speaking skills. I wanted to make them better. 
he graduated from this game school with the same idea, but he went into the coaching industry instead of going into the speaking industry. And he coached, you know, he coached uh, for, uh, uh, Fortune 500 companies. But there was something about him that I just liked. You know, there's something kept saying, call him, Stacy, call him, Stacy. So I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to I looked up his number. I called him. I said, you don't know me, but I just saw your podcast. And there's something about you I really like. And I think you can help me. Maybe you could just, you know, gear me on the right track, you know. And we ended up talking for over an hour and he ended up being my coach. And within four months, he had he had 10 X me, you know, from where I was where I was at. You know, it's really important to have a coach because a coach sees out of the box. We only see, you know, we see things or we do things a specific way and we get used to those things. But right. society is changing. We have to constantly change. We have to constantly understand our consumers. We have to kind of grow, you know, OK, we're doing X, Y and Z now. What else could we offer our 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 our, our con consumers? How can we make their life easier? How can we make their life better? We have to keep changing things up, changing things up. And even in marketing, you know, I know people that have businesses, they're marketing like they're still in the nineties, you know, mm. that doesn't work anymore. You know, you, you, it's great to have a coach because my coach will, you know, he became, he's still my coach and, you know, he will, he will stop me if I'm doing something wrong. He will, every day he checks in on me and he's like, all right, what are you doing today? You know, and I'll tell him my goals for the day and I'll tell him what I'm doing. And if he doesn't like it. He's like, I don't think you should do that. I think you should really consider doing this. He won't tell me what to do, but he'll consider, you know, he'll, he'll kind of gear me in that direction. And, you know, all those years of that direction has made me grow substantially, you know? So I think everybody should have a coach. And I think sometimes it's good to have more than one coach, you know, depending on the areas that you need. Coaches are, are key. I really think they are. They really help you and they really make you see things in a different light. What? <laughs> Um, how often do you think uh, a business owner should evaluate their business and, you know, look at changing, you know, up what they're doing? I think every month you should look at what you're doing and then look at your what you did previously and then think about, OK, am, am I making the same amount of money that I made last month? Am I making less? You know, why am I not growing? You know, what can I do to grow? and then focus on creating a plan and all right, you know, because you want to keep growing and growing and growing. You don't want to stay, you don't want to stay plateaued. So you really have to always evaluate, always can, you know, I evaluate, okay, I made this much money this week. I made this much money that week, but yet, yet you know, I went on vacation and I, or I wasn't able to work this day because of X, Y, and Z. So you have to really understand, you know, exactly what's going on 24 seven. But at the end of the month, you should always look at how much you made that month, how much you made previously, and what are your goals for next month? And, how, and, and if you're doing the same thing, you can do the same thing and see, and if you're still making the same amount of money, all right, I need to change it up because I want to, I want to really grow. So what can I do to grow? What can I do to help myself? And then you think of ways and you work, you know, for me, I work with a coach. All right. What can we do to help myself grow? You know, and then we look at all my strengths and we look at my consumers and we look at what my consumers needs are because they talk to you. You know, after a while of working with clients, you should be able to be able to have a conversation. You know, they're not your friends, but they should be you should be able to be, have an intimate conversation that you know them well enough that you know what their needs are and then focus on what the majority of your your clients need and if you don't have that provided create it you know and you know and and have you know we all need help you know i i have a team now of people who work with me i could not be where i am if i didn't have a team but it took a while until i i worked with him and i was able to 10x i had you know some people helping me but i wasn't able to afford to have as many people as i have today you know, so it's really, it's a process, you know, and it's really, you have to really create, you have to be organized and well-tasked. And if you're not, go get yourself a management coach and let them teach you how to prioritize and how to manage things so you can become like that. Because a business, a successful business is very organized and task-oriented. Now, now, do you think also with having a conversation with your coach, um, also having a conversation with say your your bookkeeper or your accountant to understand like where the money is going or what your yeah. your money do, is doing i think sometimes a lot of people fail to uh, really understand what their money is is really doing 
Oh, hundred percent. And and some people don't realize what they're spending it on. You know, you know things you could you could spend things and you can spend X amount of money each month. You're not realizing. Oh my gosh, that at the end of the year, that's causing me X, Y, and Z. You know, it's causing me this amount of money, and I don't even really need that. You know, I just wasted twelve hundred dollars this year. You know, you know you you should have a bookkeeper. You should have someone that you talk to and 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 help helps you handle your books. You know, it's important. It's very important to have you know someone in the financial area to to take care of your books and to help you because be, you can't do everything. You know, it's just impossible if you're going to have a successful business. You cannot do everything. It's just you got 24 hours in a day. And that's what their job is. They're a numbers person. You know, I am not a numbers person. I never liked numbers. I tried it in college. I stood in accounting for a little bit and then I was out. I said, all right, this is not for me. I'm switching majors. You know, I was just some people, you're very good with it. You find a good bookkeeper that really handles everything and lets you know what's going on. And then, you know, you know, from there, okay, I don't need this, but I could use this and I'm making extra money. So now I could afford doing this and that's going to make my life easier and I can grow because of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think having somebody that's good with numbers is absolutely important. Um, yeah. We're, we're both numbers people. So we, we agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most guys do. I noticed that a lot of guys are. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't know why. I just always have and always will, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> so obviously, we, when we're on the topic of coaching, uh, no two coaches are alike, just like no no client is alike. Uh, right. What kind of questions would you recommend if somebody's searching for a coach to make sure that they're getting the right coach? Because obviously, if you hire the wrong coach, they're going to take you in, the, in, in a different direction than hiring yeah. the correct coach. So what kind of questions should people be asking when they go to get a coach? I think you, you need to really talk with the person, see if your personalities click first of all, okay. then look at the, you know, start to ask the person, you know, what's your vision? You know, what do you, what are you looking to achieve? You know, what are the challenges that are, you know, holding you back from achieving what you want to achieve, you know, and then, and then, you know, I even, I have questions actually that I, I ask my clients, you know, and I, I, you know, so I ask them, you know, so tell, tell me a little about your vision, you know, tell me, you know, what you want to achieve. What do you want to achieve in your personal life? What do you want to achieve in your work life? You know, because the, the real goal is to have a successful business where you work less and make more. You know, so what are your goals? Do you want to spend more time with your kids and be able to have a have a, a business where money is coming in and you don't have to constantly be there and and you know constantly work like a dog? You know, where do you you know where do you see yourself like in the next couple of months? You know, you know where do you see yourself like I said in six months in twelve months? You know, and get a feel for what that person really wants from their life. You know, and you know and and then you know and when you're talking to the person, you'll see if your your personalities can. Connect, you know, because sometimes people's personalities don't connect, you know, and they're just not the right person. And then as a coach, you want to be able to have a person that is, you know, that is willing to make the effort because you could give the greatest advice. But if they're not going to follow what you're giving them, they're not going to be successful. So you have to make sure as a coach on the coach's side that this person is serious, you know, and because your, your goal is to help this person, right. you know, yeah. and you really want a person that's going to be responsible. And when you say, you know, call me at 945 and let's go over this, you want them to make call you at 945 and, and you want to make sure. And that person has to be serious about wanting to achieve their goals, you know, and, and they have to feel confident that the, that coach is going to give them what they need. And by speaking with that coach and by speak, you'll see if they're knowledgeable or not, you know, just by the way they talk, by the way they, the questions they ask. And then, you know, and then, you know, asking them, what what would this mean to you if you were able to, you know, um, be able to work less and make more and be able to, you know, get rid of those challenges in your life and, and overcome those obstacles that are holding you back in your business? You know, how much would that mean to you? And they're like, oh, my God, that would mean everything to me. Well, you can see how motivated they are. They're, they're ready to go. They're ready to rock, right. you know. 
And so that's the kind of clients you want. And you want you want to and and you want to have that rapport. You both want you want to help them and they want to help themselves. And that's the key is that those are the type of clients that you know coaches want and you as a person have to be serious about it, you know, because if you're not serious about it, then you're just throwing away wasted money. Sure. Sure. Well, Stacy, this time has come up quick. It's been fun talking to you, honestly, like it's, you, you. Got, it's, uh, you got a good perspective and I like it. So I appreciate it. Great. Obviously we live in a world where um, there's not a lot of positivity in life anymore. It seems like, can you end us yeah. on something positive that encouraging to, to our viewers? Great. Well, I, I believe that there is, you know, in life, you know, we, we, we make life, um, you know, you have to really, like I said earlier, in life, positivity is key. You will not succeed if you don't look at the positive things in life in, and you're not positive. And I say, look at the people around you, first of all. Or do you have negative people around you or do you have positive people around you? And if you have negative people around you, well, they're just sucking the energy, all that good energy out of you. It's time to really evaluate the people around you. And you know what? If you have good friends, but they're negative, it doesn't mean that you have to alienate them, but keep your distance. Okay. Start bringing in those positive energies, those positive people, and you feed off of each other. And, you know, when you look at life, there is a good, there's good in everybody. There is positivity is, is key. And in your life, we all have you know, the, the magic key is faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. And for everything that happens into your life, take a moment to look at, okay, this happened, but what positive thing happened from it? Did it make me stronger? Did it make me look at life in a different perspective? Do I have more empathy now? And, you know, learn from it. Use it as an experience. Don't look at it. Don't be a pity party person where, oh, poor me, you know, take it, learn from it, grow, move on, you know, and that's what it's all about. It's about living a happy, healthy, productive life. And the only way to li live a happy, healthy, productive life is to be positive. In life, everyone goes through their ups and downs, but we have to rise above the chaos. We have to overcome and we have to turn our dream into a reality. And that's what life is about. That's awesome. Love it. Absolutely. So I have, I have two websites, uh, Stacy Chilimi, uh, dot com and then coach Stacy uh, yes. are those the two primary websites just to get in contact with you yes those are the two primary um, websites and I'm all over the internet and I'm on all the social media so you can easily just type my name and find me everywhere okay because what we're gonna do is uh, when the video comes up later today and then we got it on all the podcast platforms as well we're gonna hyperlink your your two links so that make it easy for everybody to click with you I and then just it. just so that we can you know further help advertise you. What what's the name of your podcast? The podcast is The Advisor with Stacy Chalemi. Perfect, perfect. So go yeah. go give her a subscribe over there too. I'm assuming you're on all podcast channels as well. Yes, I'm okay. on all of them. I figured. So mm -hmm. that way we can we can help support you as well, um, and we will go and subscribe as well. So, so Stacy, we wish you we wish you nothing but the best, and, and yeah. especially with your health journey as well. Yes. Hopefully that that continues strong and you uh, stay seizure free. Uh, Thank you. And if there's anything else we can do for you in the meantime, please let us know. We definitely would love to help you out. Thank well, you I for being on. Oh, thank you for having me. You guys are wonderful. I really enjoyed this time with you guys. Absolutely. You're great. Pleasure. All right, you have a wonderful day now. You too. You Welcome to the Business After Hours, where the ties loosen, the suit relax, and we talk business without the boring. Grab your favorite drink, kick back, and let's dive into the world of business.